afternoon, I'm Imani Humphreys Torres, a member of the City School student media team and a senior at Western High School. Thank you for joining us on City Schools TV for the latest installment of In the Know, a series where we dive into important issues impacting education in Baltimore City. Joining us, as always, is the CEO of City Schools, Dr. Sonia Brooke Santalisis. Good afternoon, Dr. Ed. Good afternoon, Imani. <laughs> Good to be back here Good with you. Good to have you here. So, this afternoon, we're going to dive directly into City School's new grading policy and what it means for me and my peers. Are you ready to get started? Absolutely. Great. For anyone new to this topic or wondering about the grading policy, can you give viewers some background on what's changed and kind of just what went into this discussion? Sure. So, I think some of the main changes um, that viewers should know about and that clearly our students do is one, uh, the change in percentages in terms of uh, what factors go into a student's grade. Uh, the second, uh, second major change really is a, around what we call reassessment, the opportunity for young people to um, actually relearn the material post-assessment and then have some other way of demonstrating that they, that they progressed in their learning. And then third, a weekly update to grades, a weekly update to um, give young people the opportunity to see where they are in the continuum. And I think another important note is oftentimes folks think about assessments as just being tests yeah. that we take uh, while we're in school. And really assessments could include things like speeches, mm -hmm. projects. Um, so it's not just kind of sitting down and only taking a test. Mm -hmm. So one thing that's like really shifted is just like the percentage and like how it's weighted? Yes, well I'd say the percentage, but also the reassessment period. Okay. Like that, that piece was not consistent across all schools. Yeah. It was not something everyone did. And it's a really important piece, even though I know from a lot of students, the major focus yeah. is on the percentage <laughs> shift. So I understand that, yes. Nice. All right. So before we get into the show, we reached out to students throughout the district to get their thoughts and concerns about the new policy. We're going to share those clips with you, our viewers, and then ask Dr. S to weigh in. So let's head out to field reporter Tia Bryant. Tia? Thanks, Imani. Great start to the conversation with Dr. S. So over the last couple of weeks, we've gone to different schools asking students about how they feel about the grading policy. Their thoughts, questions, and challenges all being shared by our students. Let's hear if they have to say. Hey guys, so I'm here with Jaquil, and so what are your thoughts on the grading policy? Well, grading policy, it isn't really as bad as I thought it would be. We do a lot of work in the class, and our tests are like graded differently. I'm from New York, so it's way different than here now. In New York, it was, I think, 10% for homework, 50 for classwork, and 40 for tests. And in Baltimore, they mostly follow the the standards that they give them in New York is a little flexibility that a teacher can have with the test. So it's not set to benefit us in any way, if that makes sense. In past years, I focus, I have to study a lot more when it comes to tests because it's a bigger deal. But for now, homework is something that's like, I still do, but it's not something that's going to gradually change my grades. It's getting harder each year. You know, you got to really put the work in now more than you ever did. I've never really been a studying type, but now it's like I'm focused, I'm more focused on studying. The bad part about it is it's hard for kids to adjust to having 70% of their grade change because now they have to get accustomed to doing homework, classwork to get all the knowledge to get to passing the test. But most students don't even want to do the homework or the classwork because they feel like since it's 70%, that's the biggest chunk. I should just focus on passing that so they do anything just to pass. But it's also a good thing because it prepares us for college because in college, that's all they worry about is if you have the knowledge to pass the test, then you'll do good in the class. I feel like the grading policy is unfair, especially for those students who are not good test take takers because their whole grade is based around that 70 percent. You could be passing a class with an A or B, but if you get like a, a 70 or a 60 or a 50 on the test, you're failing that class. You can be kicking butt and doing your classwork and doing your homework, but if you're not a good test taker, it basically puts you at a disadvantage. So how is it affecting you comparing to last year and this year succeeding in school? Well, um, last year, I can say I did well on a lot of tests or sometimes somebody might did, you know, I didn't probably do too well and it didn't really affect my grade as much. And this year it's, you know, it's kind of tough to maintain, you know, a B when you got, you know, 70% of your grade being test. I'm not a really good test taker, so to make your test 75% of your grade is kind of like saying that, oh, if you can't take tests, then might as well just fill the class. We all do our classwork, we all do our homework, so 
why fail us for just getting one test wrong? Say, for instance, I'm doing all my classwork, and then they just throw one big test at me. And then now, all of a sudden, I go from 85 to 50. A lot of students are struggling with this change, and I personally wish that they all the schools had like a sort of enhancement or a homeroom where they were they're able to actually like get back on track with their studies and have a period of like a week of, of a school week to actually like organize themselves with this new change and the way it was handled. Not a lot of students know know how to um, do this new exchange. So having that um, enhancement period personally in our um, and our school really has helped us out. If you had the chance to improve the grading policy, what changes would you make to help benefit you and other students? Well, I would definitely change the way that tests are graded because there's a lot of students that do a lot of classwork and we might not do as much homework, but <laughs> we put in a lot, a lot of work at school. I just feel like, honestly, it should be participation first. You want to show you care for your class period and that should count in your grade. I feel like homework is just like, it's like a mini test, but you get help on your tests at home. So that's what I've always thought of homework. Class work higher, homework higher, and tests lower. It's just so much requirements you have to follow in order to, just to get that perfect grade. And also, I would like to get more engagement and more participation in doing homework and classwork because it's not just for teachers to check it and to get a grade. It's for you to learn what you were doing in class to get to the test. Poly has been doing it itself with the enhancement periods. I would do more, maybe two um, enhancement periods per week so kids can balance off the work that they're getting so they're prepared for the test and they do the classwork and homework that they have to do for that week. Participation points, um, classwork points, homework points, I would build that around the assessment grade. I would like give my students a review sheet or something so that they know what's going to be on the test and I would give them a study guide to prepare themselves for the test. As you can see, all the students have different opinions about the grading policy. Some students benefit from it, while others have ideas on how it can change. This has been Tia Bright from City Schools TV. Now we'll head back to Amani and Dr. Sanalises where they'll discuss what we just talked about. Thanks, Tia. Great job collecting student perspectives. So, Dr. S, the students seem really concerned about percentages and the weights assessment hold. How do you see it? So, what I'd say on that one, Amani, is uh, two things. First, we do know that once young people go to college, any kind of college, yeah. you know, the majority of your grade is tied to what you're actually able to produce within an assessment. Um, the second piece is assessments don't just mean tests, right? Because, you know, I've heard from you and other students that, you know, I'm not necessarily my best every time I sit down for a test. Yeah. And so we encourage teachers to include things like presentations and mm -hmm. speeches, um, different projects, right, research projects. Those can all be counted as assessment. Mm -hmm. So I know it's very natural for students to yeah. go straight to, oh my God, it's a test. Um, but really assessments is a broad, mm -hmm. kind of broad category. Um, and then, you know, the third piece on that is we're, we are really emphasizing this, um, this reassessment mm -hmm. uh, component of the grading policy where a student should be able to get a test back, if it is a test, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and actually see mm -hmm. where they might have fell short and then be able to go and access mm -hmm. um, additional help, additional learning opportunities to be able to then reassess their learning. So we don't see mm -hmm. um, the assessment as just the end all to be all. Mm -hmm. Um, or a test to be the end-all to be-all, but it really is about a process mm -hmm. and about really preparing young people for what school looks like after high school. That's fair. So I see like the new kind of percentages really reflect just college preparation, really. They really do. And I had, uh, I had dinner a few <laughs> weeks ago uh, with a uh, Baltimore City uh, school grad who is at my alma mater, Mauricio, is there. And we were sitting at dinner and I asked him and I said, okay, tell me what you think about the grading policy. This is one of the shifts um, that we've made. You know, we're trying to hear student feedback and from the perspective of somebody who was in city schools, yeah. who's now in college, and he looked at me and he said, are you kidding me? That's what college is. Like yeah. there, there are no, you know, heavy weights on things like, you know, participation or homework. While that's important, yeah. um, it's actually leading to the final, the preparation mm -hmm. for the final demonstration of your learning. So look, this was not intended um, to hurt young people, but I, I, I also think 
um, you know, there are things that we need to put in place to make sure that students can be successful because that's the actual goal. We that's want you all to be successful. So a lot of the feedback was kind of just about like the need to really push for studying now. So most of the student perspective is about what students might describe as, you know, negative, like needing to study more, like you have to now, it's mandatory, where other students see it as a long-term benefit. It's kind of like, just what are your thoughts on that? So I, I think the, my thinking on that mm -hmm. is what this points out for me is we have to do a better job in structuring opportunities mm -hmm. uh, for young people to strengthen their study skills, for young people to get feedback. Mm -hmm. We know that, and I think we heard that in the yeah. video as well, <laughs> you know, we heard about the enhancement period uh, that Polly's instituted, and I met with the, the CEO student advisory mm -hmm. group and heard a request from two students from two other high schools who said, mm -hmm. can we get an enhancement period? And part of you know, what I heard was we want the opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to um, really attend to those places where we're weaker, um, but then also those periods allow you the opportunity to work with your teacher, work with someone else who does know the content yeah. deeply, and learn how to study more. Um, so yeah, I'd rather have <laughs> the expectation increased now yeah. than for young people to come you know, back after their first semester mm -hmm. um, in, in school after high school and yeah. say to me, my God, you guys did <laughs> not prepare me for yeah. what this looks like. But the key for me is support. And how do we make sure, mm -hmm. um, like Polly has done, that we see more and more in high schools that opportunity for young people mm -hmm. to take advantage yeah. of those additional supports, which is also like college, right? Yeah. You go to office hours with a professor, you go to study groups um, with with fellow students, and and we really need to make sure that those supports are in place. So I feel like, especially from hearing just the student perspective, do you think the next move might be getting an increase in enhancement periods or just more study halls in general? You know what, Amal? It is a, an excellent point. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely a theme. One of the things our college and career mm -hmm. um, staff and mm -hmm. team has been talking about, and one of the things that will hopefully be included mm -hmm. in an, our upcoming budget season, mm -hmm. is actually more support for schools with their scheduling, okay. because it requires a creative use of time. And so what we know is that schools need support with that. So in order to have an enhancement period, a lot of schools will say, so tell me where I'm going to fit it, Dr. That's S. true. Right, right. And so we are really looking to invest in kind of the expertise around how do we, you know, you go to Western, yeah. right? That's a school that, you know, you have a fixed schedule. Yeah. You're going from place to place. And so what we're really hoping we can do is provide schools some other support, mm -hmm. some other options so that we do have those periods in the school day. We know there are schools that have done it. We just need to make sure that all schools have that. Nice. All yes. Right. So we also heard the students discuss the challenges in taking tests or not being a good test taker. And yeah. personally, I can relate, no matter how good your grade is, mm -hmm. the minute you slip up on an assessment, that 70% really hits, even if the assessment is just giving a verbal presentation. Mm -hmm. So how do you plan on helping and assisting students within those areas? No, I think it's a great question, and it never should feel like an I gotcha, yeah. right? It shouldn't, and I, and I hear that, and I think, students are spot on yeah. when they say, look, I want multiple opportunities yeah. to show what I know. Mm -hmm. And ideally, the reassessment would do that. Mm -hmm. Ideally, the ability to um, go back, mm -hmm. uh, really look at where you might have faltered yeah. within a test setting that's separate from in a class setting that's where I'm sure you wax prolific, <laughs> um, you know, and be able to actually build that skill. Mm -hmm. And so ideally, um, in the long run, once those supports are in place, mm -hmm. it should not mean your grade is sunk mm -hmm. because of one test, but it should mean that you become increasingly more comfortable okay. uh, with different kinds of assessments. So not every assessment should be a test that has multiple choice questions, right? Mm -hmm. There should be you know, a variety of ways that, that you're showing what you know. All right. So kind of just, what are the long-term shifts for having this plan? Mm -hmm. So long term is to continue to get more feedback from young people. Okay. Um, I can't stress enough that it was kind of the early push from students, mm -hmm. the early uh, outcry. <laughs> in some, in some, as we saw on yeah, the, uh, a bit of on the video, pushback on yeah, it. That's right. Concerned. But it was good. Yeah. It was good. And what I love about um, students' pushback is 
I can honestly say, Amani, every single student I have talked to about this mm -hmm. has been reasonable, yeah. has had a really great response to the rationale. Like, our young people want to be prepared for college yeah, and school after. Definitely. Um, but I think in the long term, what it's made us do as, um, as adults in the system is to really think through mm -hmm. how we roll things out. Yeah. Young people told us you didn't communicate to us that mm -hmm. this was why. It felt like you all just pulled this. We just showed up in a new quarter. Right? That's right, we yeah. showed up in a new <laughs> quarter. And so it's made us in the long term mm -hmm. think about how do we orient mm -hmm. um, young people when we are thinking of making a switch yeah. like this. Uh, two, how do we moving forward, mm -hmm. particularly help students transition from middle school That's a great point. to high school. We heard a lot about that, a lot of freshmen saying, look, I just came from a small kindergarten yeah. through eighth grade, <laughs> and now you're slamming me with this 70%. 70 that is quite a shift. That's quite a shift, and you know, they don't necessarily know how to go and yeah. seek out a teacher mm -hmm. uh, for assistance, so we really thought about that and how we communicate more effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, the other piece is, you know, it, and it's one of the reasons why I'm glad I have a CEO student advisory group. How do we get ahead of yeah. some of this? Um, and the fact that teachers also have to be on board. We can't say yeah. teachers are going to do X, mm -hmm. right? Um, and schools are going to do Y if we actually haven't met with them about that. Yeah. And again, I, I only go back to Polly because it's a verifiable, example that yeah. young people have said once the school mm -hmm. made this shift mm -hmm. it felt like I was being better supported yeah. and I think part of what we have to have to do is really show young people that we're serious mm -hmm. about the feedback and make some of those shifts so we've learned a lot about that okay. I think uh, you're gonna see because of that kind of outcry mm -hmm. right a lot of shifts in that but you know to the credit mm -hmm. of Baltimore City students Amani I just have to let you know, I have not heard from many students. You get, a, you, you get some. You get, a but couple, you get a couple stragglers. You get a couple stragglers, right, who are just like, this is just too hard. We shouldn't be doing this. Most young people, like, want the challenge. Yeah. Like, they, they are like, yeah, I want to be ready to walk on a college campus. Mm -hmm. I want to be ready to do further training in my trade. Um, and they know, mm -hmm. you all know it's going to require more. Mm -hmm. I think the real lesson for us is we just have to do a better job at getting the supports mm -hmm. in place rather than assuming yeah. the, res the supports are going to be in place. Would there ever be a consider just by grade adjustment? Because it's like freshman year, 70% has to be a terrifying number, and I'm personally glad that wasn't introduced for me. But <laughs> sure. senior year, it's more like, all right, I'm used to kind of high pressure things. So would yeah. it ever be a considered and by grade transition into that? And as you continue yeah. on in your academic career, you kind of have to step up to the plate each time. I, th I think that's a fair, I, I think that's absolutely a fair question. I don't think we have it in place now, but the good news is we, with um, instituting ninth grade planning okay. um, this, uh, this past school year for the first time, I think it will become an increasingly important um, thing to consider, mm -hmm. right? Knowing what we know about all of the needs young people have mm -hmm. coming from middle school to high school. Yeah. Um, and you're not, by the way, the first person to suggest yeah. that. You know, I've had a couple <laughs> of students say, well, okay, if you slam me with it in 10th grade, but really, you yeah. know, as a freshman? And I think that's a valid. Um, yeah. You know, no, we're not going to do it this year. <laughs> but I think, it, I think it's a fair assessment yeah. and uh, definitely a question that's been raised on a couple of fronts. So, okay, yes. So you, you know, moving into the future with that one, keeping it in the back of our minds. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right, so what feedback have you received from families so far? Not just students, but the parents who have to like help support the students. Great question. Um, a lot of, so I, I first heard some of the challenges from young people when I, you know, hit them. Um, you know, or I should say they hit me with the news. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably more accurate. Yeah. But I did, like I got some texts from parents. Mm -hmm. And a lot of their feedback was actually similar. Okay. We didn't know what th this was coming. Yeah. We didn't know how to support our students. We're trying to support them in mm -hmm. school, but you guys kind of came up with this administrative shift. Yeah. That is huge. <laughs> and, you know, concern about the impact, mm -hmm. like you and, and others, about uh, what is this going to mean around mm -hmm. their competitiveness of GPA. Yes for certain post-secondary options. And, and interestingly enough, it, you know, and it's why I can say, 
And I have said we could have and should have done better mm -hmm. um, because parents said the same thing. I didn't have lots of parents saying this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you have homework be 50% yeah. of a student's grade? It was all about communication. Mm -hmm. It was all about you did not give us enough notice. Mm -hmm. um, it was all about we want our young people to be successful. Mm -hmm. And it was all about you guys need to do a better job yeah. in, in helping us mm -hmm. help our children. Yeah. And so a lot of the, frankly, the parent mm -hmm. and family feedback was mirrored yeah. just from a parent family perspective, yeah. a lot of what we heard from young people. Oh, all right. Yeah. See? Yeah, it's great to just, you know, have that communication basis. It down. was. And I did get some texts. I was yeah. in I was in the school board meeting and I got a, a parent who mm -hmm. also works for city schools. It was like, I just want you to know <laughs> this grade changing policy is turning my house upside oh, down. Yeah. Right. So it was I believe me, I felt it. I did. I did. <laughs> so, so the last question from the video is around mm -hmm. placing more of an emphasis on participation in classwork. Mm -hmm. So why do you think these are uh, areas on how students are graded? So one, I would say, I don't think it's that participation doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I would say that the shift that I want for young people mm -hmm. within this is seeing things like participation, yeah. homework, mm -hmm. study group, classwork as part of what goes along with being a successful student. Definitely. It's not about necessarily getting credit for it. And again, I go back to the conversation with Mauricio. He's like, nobody's giving <laughs> me an A oh, yeah. because I went to a study group with four colleagues for my math class. He said, I went to the study group because if I didn't go to the study group, mm -hmm. I wouldn't know where the heck I was. Exactly. And so what I want young people to know is that it, it actually does count. Okay. It's just part of the work mm -hmm. that goes into whatever that final assessment is, which is not always a test. And I have a sister who's a, who's a college professor, so I always kind of get feedback from mm -hmm. her because um, she teaches a lot of freshmen. Oh. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things that she says is, Sonia, even when I'm doing, mm -hmm. um, when I'm considering the final grade for a young, you know, a student yeah. of hers, you know, one of the things she says is that it matters. Yeah. It matters if you come to my office hours. Mm -hmm. It matters if I see you participating in class. It matters if you, you know, you're asking questions and you're participating. And so that even though it's not 10 or 20 percent of your grade, yeah. you know, she has said from a college um, educator perspective, mm -hmm. it, it does contribute to how I view mm -hmm. the effort, the commitment um, of a student. And so I just want to say to young people, it's not that that doesn't count. Mm -hmm. You know, there's at one, there's another 30 percent. Mm -hmm. Two, there's reassessment, and I will tell you from my sister, that's not always the case. Sometimes <laughs> the grade you get is the it's grade. Just what you have it's to be it's just tell. what you have. As a matter of fact, she told me, she said, make sure you tell them to yeah. take advantage of the reassessment <laughs> now. But, you know, it does matter, yeah. and it does show, and it, and it really contributes mm -hmm. to your success, even in, like, a job, Definitely. right? Like an employer who has a young person who will participate, mm -hmm. dialogue, exchange. It's not even just for college. Yeah. It's for real life, real work um, circumstances, and it's not always attached to a grade, yeah. but it does contribute to the final product. I feel like this grade has just made me realize you need a holistic view as a student about just the whole policy itself, where it's like, I understand the 70%, but you still have to talk to your teachers and you still have to do that homework, right. right? Just kind of cushion, cushion it out, bare minimum. That's right, yeah. that's exactly right. That's exactly right. All right. So before we close out, are there any final statements or things that we haven't discussed that you want to directly state to our students? Yes, I would just say first, I want to thank all of uh, the young people, uh, the students in Baltimore City Public Schools who were very vocal, who gave feedback. Uh, your feedback matters, and it's one of the reasons why we took a step back and why there are changes being made. And number two, just to re-emphasize, uh, the changes were not to make your life miserable. The <laughs> changes were to help you get ready to be successful, um, both in school after high school, um, as well as just long term in life in a career period. So um, we know that you're more than a grade, uh, but we want to make sure that you're ready.
All right, well, Dr. S, it looks like it has come to the end of our time together today. Thank you for being kind enough to join us here. Yeah, oh, show. look at that. Thank <laughs> you. It's always good being with you, Amari. Great. It is great. Um, and I also want to thank our students for sharing their opinions on the grading policy. We appreciate you. And a final shout out to you, our viewers, for watching the In the Know on City Schools TV. Make sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube for more installments with Dr. S and other leaders in City Schools. I'm Imani Humphrey-Torres. Good night. <laughs>